This morning, I invite you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19, looking at verses 1 through 8. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 8. And we'll also put it on the screen as we read those first few verses. Amen. Beginning verse 1 of 1 Kings 19. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid, and he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. May God add a blessing to reading and the hearing of his word. I want you to think about this morning, coping with stress, anxiety, and depression. Coping with stress, anxiety, and depression. And you at home might know some people you need to text right away. Say, come listen to this message. Amen. Truly, stress, anxiety, and depression are not strangers in this world. And they're not strangers even in the body of Christ. Please hear me now that even as believers in Jesus Christ, we're not exempt from stress, anxiety, or depression. Though sometimes we pretend like we are, but the reality is we're not. We're in the world, but not of the world. We have the pressures of the world all around us. Matter of fact, in September 27th, an article in the Wall Street Journal really kind of encapsulate this because, you know, if, if iPhone folk are into it, it says Apple is developing an iPhone feature to detect mental health issues. I mean, I don't know how they're going to do it, but they're working on it right now that, you know, those of you who have those iPhones, that they're working how to detect mental health as you hold that phone. And another article in the Wall Street Journal back in October 15th says, COVID anxiety is a health problem also, or two, amen. So with all this uh, COVID going around, they've seen more and more, something like worldwide, pre-pandemic, then post-pandemic, or in the middle of this pandemic, that during this pandemic, there's been 129 million more cases of severe depression and anxiety around the world. So we see it's all around us, anxiety, stress, and depression all around us. Matter of fact, Washington Post, uh, a June article on June 10th, talks about rates of anxiety and depression among college students continue to soar. So if you've got a student in college, you know someone in college, you need to be checking in on them frequently just to do a mental health check. You don't have to tell them it's a mental health check, but check in on them, Amen. 
And if you're in college, make sure you're connecting with your friends. Matter of fact, one college in North Carolina, in, also in, in uh, October, they shut down for a whole day, and the president called it a wellness day because some incidents had happened on campus and students had hurt themselves because of stress, anxiety, and depression. My friends, and guess what? It's all around us. We are not exempt from stress, anxiety, and depression. Healthcare workers, doctors, clergy, students, prison guards have a high rate of suicide even. My friends, this is something we need to be talking about in the body of Christ. Because guess what, my friends, I wish, I wish we could say we, uh, when we come into Christ, we're exempt from these issues of environmental. But sometimes life hurts, and sometimes it shows up. And sometimes life hurts have their invisible hurts. Like if I, if I broke my arm, you could see it, and you would expect me to go to the doctor, and I would go to the doctor to get my arm fixed. But sometimes when my heart is hurt, when your soul is hurt, you still need help, amen? And that's what we got to get to in the body of Christ, amen? And what happens, we can see even in our text today, that Elijah, this great man of God, Elijah, who in, in chapter 18 of 1 Kings, has a great victory on Mount Carmel over the 450 prophets of Baal. God is exalted, and the people turn back to God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But King Ahab uh, goes to his wife, Jezebel, and Jezebel is a wicked woman, she worships false gods. She's a paganist. And she corrupts her husband even more, because he was corrupt to begin with, and then he, she corrupts him even, even more, that he leads the people of Israel to worship, worship false gods. Mm. And God is not pleased with Ahab. So Ahab runs to Jezebel and tells him, tells her rather, all that Elijah has done on Mount Carmel, the victory. Well, Jezebel sends a threat message to Elijah. Now, now, this great man of God, this prophet of God, who hears directly from God, is shaken to his sandals. Matter of fact, the text tells us that so much so that he was afraid and what happens is this fear grips him. And a lot of times it's our, our stress, anxiety, and depression. A lot of times, not, not exclusively, but a lot of times our stress, anxiety, and depression come from fear. That we fear things. We, we fear the future. We fear what might happen. And someone has said 90% of what we worry about never comes to fruition as well. We fear the unknown. We fear our health situations. We fear, will I get COVID? We fear, will I catch this disease? We fear the future. We fear maybe you got a really mean and nasty boss. Maybe you got some bullies in your life and you fear them. Maybe you fear, maybe I won't get into school I want to get to. Maybe I won't get the job I want to get to. I fear this interview I'm going to go to. I fear what the doctor's going to say, so I won't go to my appointments. I fear going to the dentist, so I won't go to the dentist as well. I don't want to hear what the dentist is going to say. Fear, fear debilitates us. Fear sets us down, shuts us down. Here, Elijah, this great man of God, is fearful of Jezebel. He's afraid and runs for his life. My friends, you've got to identify what you're afraid of and give it to God. Hear, hear me now. God is bigger than anybody, anyone that you might fear, anything you might fear. God is bigger than the sum of all your fears. But we've got to trust God. See, if the enemy, the, the, Satan loves to use fear to shut us down. Matter of fact, someone once said, what would you do for God if he weren't afraid? Maybe you're afraid of what others might think of you. Afraid of going against what 
I just want you to do. What are you afraid of? Amen. Elijah is so afraid, and he's just had a great victory, and he's, he hears very direct word of God. So this great man of God can be fearful. Guess what? You and I can be fearful as well, but then we have to realize in 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear. So fear doesn't come from God, amen? But he gives us a spirit of power and love and self-control. My friends, again, not all of our stress, anxiety, depression comes from fear, but a lot of it does because it can overwhelm us and shut us down, but we've got to trust in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let's look at a couple of verses here, three and four. Then he was afraid and he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, it is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And here, again, he is so afraid. He's stressed, full of anxiety. And now we see he's depressed to the point of thinking about suicide. Mm. And this is a great man of God. So don't think that you are exempt from the pressures of piling in on you. Mm. But now, look at this. Though he, he's like, look, I wish I wasn't born, I wish I weren't here. He doesn't take his life. He has a boundary in his mind and says, my life is sacred. My life belongs to God. He says, and he asks that he might die. He's asking that God, God, you can take me home now. But he refuses. Elijah has a line drawn in the sand. He refuses to harm himself. Amen. And my friends, I want to encourage you that while you're doing well, won't you make up in your mind, indelibly etch in your soul, that I, no matter how bad, how tough life might get, I refuse to hurt myself and I refuse to hurt others. Won't you make up your mind now and, and, and stand on that promise so in those midnight hours, in the darkness of life, he said, no, 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 I will not do that. Satan is a liar. There's a boundary. Now, if God wants to take me home, that's another story. My friends, put that indelible in your soul. In those times when maybe you're not thinking straight. And you're not thinking about, let me take the way out to end the pain. You say, no, no. Mm, my friends, because life hurts sometimes. I don't care who you are. From the parking lot, to the pew, to the pulpit, to the choir loft, life hurts sometimes. But you've got to make up your mind where your boundaries are. Because life can cave in on you. But my friends, we've got to trust in the Lord. Because mm, even Elijah goes through this. And if a great man like Elijah can go through this, how much more you and I who believe in Jesus Christ as well. Amen. Praise God. Here's a thought. So here's some helps. Coping with stress, anxiety, and depression, God is bigger than the source of your fear. Please remember that. God is bigger than the source of your fear. Satan uses fear to rob us of the blessings of God. Think about Numbers 13. The, the, the 12 spies go to the promised land where God has, has promised them the land flowing with milk and honey. Well, 10 come back, or well, all 12 come back, but 10 are so fearful, they give a false report, and they miss their blessing. My friends, fear will cause you to miss your blessings God has for you. Amen? That's why we've got to trust in the Lord and not in your fear. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Verse 19, chapter 19, verse 5. And he lay down and slept under a broom tree. This is Elijah. And behold, an angel, God dispatches his angel, touched him and said to him, arise and eat. I'm going to give you some, some pointers, some things that can help us maybe to prevent the depth of stress, anxiety, and depression. 
And if you're in the middle of it, some things you can implement maybe to help you, amen? It's not an exhaustive answer, but some things that might help in general, amen? One, adequate rest and sleep. My uh, friends, there's nothing worse than a tired soldier. Because when we're tired and fatigued, we don't think straight. When we're tired and fatigued, we make bad decisions. You ever drive a car when you're tired and sleepy and you kind of go the wrong way and you end up in an accident sometimes, amen? We need rest for the weary soul, amen? When we sleep and rest, God has, has not given us our glorified bodies yet, amen? We still need to rest, amen? We need to sleep and rest. And in those times of, of you going through seasons of stress and pressure, and, and you've gotta pull back, amen, and chill out, amen? Take some, some rest breaks, amen? You can't handle everything that you used to handle when things are going well. And recognize when you're in those seasons of stress and depression and anxiety, you've got to make sure you're getting adequate rest. <laughs> Elijah is resting and sleeping. And you see in that passage where the angel says, hey, God, you need to rest, you need to sleep, amen? My friends, when we sleep, our bodies renew and refresh. And they say the average person needs between seven to nine hours of sleep to refresh us, to rebuild our muscles, to, to calm us out, to chill us out. Amen? Amen. They said babies need like, I think, 14 to 17 hours of sleep. Amen? Because they're growing. Amen? And so what, what, when you're going through a time of stress, anxiety, and depression, uh, preventively, make sure you're getting adequate rest on a regular basis, amen? Now, now, if you're in the midst of this, make sure you work hard to get some good sleep, amen? And uh, if you're not sleeping, get some help, amen? Go to your family physician and say, hey, I'm having a problem. I'm not sleeping over three hours a night, amen? Man, you're just compounding it. I remember back in the day when, you know, in college, we pull all-nighters every now and then, amen? But, 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 you know, you can't do all-nighters for five days in, in a row, amen? Some, you're going to break down somewhere. You become more irritable, amen? You become short-tempered, amen? Amen. And guess what? And it's worry when we're worry and worry and worry. And, you know, we, we think it's a, as if we're God and we can fix it, amen? you got to turn over to God and leave it with God, Amen. Amen. Uh, Matthew 6, 27 says, who of you can add one hour to your life by worry? Amen. No, give it to God. Amen. See, the more we trust God, the more we can take our fears, anxiety, and worries and give them to God. Amen. Praise God. And see, worry will keep you up at night, and you can't fix it. Amen. Guess what? God never sleeps nor slumbers. Amen. So if he's going to be up anyhow, you go to sleep and let God handle it. Amen. Give it to God and leave it there. Amen. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lay down in green pasture. He restoreth. He renews my soul. Amen. Rest. God has wired us to sleep. God has wired us to rest. Now, if you're sleeping more than normal, like if you don't, you, maybe you sleep maybe you regular seven hours, and now you're sleeping 14 hours or so, you might, sometimes anxiety and stress can cause you to sleep more, so you got to get the balance there, amen? And see, our mamas were right, because mama said, son and daughters, you need your rest, amen? How much mama knew, amen? Praise God, amen? You can't burn the candle on both ends, amen? Especially, especially, when you're in seasons of stress and anxiety and depression, amen? You've got to give it a rest. Give yourself a rest, amen? Sometimes you just got to say, no, I can't do anything else. I can't do anything more. Uh, you've got to guard your health, amen? Your mental health, your emotional health, amen? You've got to guard it, amen? Praise God. See, when I have a headache, I might take an aspirin, amen? But when your soul is hurting, what do you do, amen? You need to sleep, amen? You get some rest, amen? Praise God. So, uh, we want to encourage you to get adequate rest and adequate sleep. Amen. In verse 5, and he lay down and slept. Yes. Under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, arise and eat. In verse 6, and he looked and behold, there was a, at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down again. My friends, when you're going through coping with stress, anxiety, and depression, eat, 
drink water and exercise. Now, I originally said eat, drink, and exercise. When I said, okay, some of y'all kind of like lawyerly, you say, well, he said drink. No, drink water. Okay. Okay, we need to eat, make sure we're eating healthy meals, amen, especially in those seasons of stress, anxiety, and depression. Make sure you're eating um, meals that are healthy, amen. Can't, be careful of the sugary stuff that you're eating. If you're abounding, okay, I'm a chocoholic, amen. I love chocolate, amen. Sometimes we medicate with chocolate. Some of us, amen, in that club, we medicate with chocolate, amen. We medicate with sweets because we reach for it as, as so quickly available and easily available, amen, but you got to check yourself and are you overdoing it, amen, because you might be trying to medicate with food, amen, with feel-good food, amen, all the greasy stuff, amen, which is not helping you emotionally, amen, all the sugary stuff, which is really slowing you down cognitively even, amen, and emotionally, amen. So you got to make sure you guard your diet, amen. Make sure you're getting vegetables, amen, and a reasonable portion of protein in your, in your, in your body. But also drink water, amen. Do you realize that 60%, 60% of our body is made up of water, amen? Most of our organs, it's water, amen. Um, lungs and heart and brain, a lot of fluid, water, amen. So we need to be drinking water, amen, praise God. And God gives us water. Water refreshes. I know the times when I'm drinking adequate amounts of water, I think better, I process better, I sleep better, amen. Cast off the toxins that kind of want to stay in your body, amen. Make sure you're drinking water. Carry a water bottle with you, amen, because it's so easy when you don't have your water bottle with you, amen. We reach for the soda, the sugary soda, or the sweet, sweet iced tea that's too sweet that a spoon can stick, stand up in, amen. That's just not good for you, amen, especially in times of stress, anxiety, and depression. It compounds us, amen. So we need to eat, uh, drink water. Water, amen. And t- check with your doctor how much water you ought to be drinking on a daily basis, amen. Praise God, amen. Because you don't want to be dehydrated as well, so drink water, amen. God's gift to us is water. And we live in a country that water is readily available in most places, amen. Praise God. And then we need to exercise, not to overdo it, amen. Praise God. You're, you're, you're not run- Atlas or running for a marathon, though if you've been doing that kind of training, fine. But if you're just starting out, get out of bed. Don't wallow in the bed, amen, because that'll depress you. When you wake up, if you're not praying, get out of bed, amen. Start the day moving, amen, and, and accomplish something. Make your bed, amen. Praise God. Clean your room, amen. At least you can say, I accomplished something today, amen. And exercise, it's about go, go for a walk. Do something. It doesn't have to be a heavy thing. Go walk for 30 minutes if, if your body's able to walk, amen. But do something. Walk up down your stairs. Walk around your house, amen. Just move, amen. And someone has said, just move, amen. It'll bless your body because when you're moving, the body body releases uh, endorphins would help lift you up out of depression, amen. Praise God. We can self-medicate that way as well, amen. Praise God. Go talk to your doctor, amen. Talk to your family physician, amen, especially if you're feeling down and sluggish and you're sad, you've got stress, anxiety, and depression hovering around you, amen. Praise God. Some people get stressed just because of the change of seasons, amen, especially in the fall of the year. It gets a little dark in the fall, not much light going on. It can put us in depressed kind of moods, amen. Praise God. Be aware of your seasons, amen. What's, what's impacting you? What do I need to do to change my situation, amen. Praise God. We want you to eat, exercise and drink water, amen. Praise God, amen. These are the things that will, will help you, amen. Praise God. So draw, but draw a line in the sand and say, I will not hurt myself, amen. Because, I mean, we read it, I mean, clergy, we're not exempt. Doctors, you're not exempt. First responders, you're not exempt. Uh, college students and high school students, uh, you're not exempt, amen. Praise God. But please, 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 I plead to you, I beg you, Please take care of yourself emotionally and physiologically, amen. We know it if I've got if I got a broken arm, I'll do that. But my friends, when your heart or soul is broken and you're not thinking straight and you feel like you want to throw in the towel because you get the pain, you want the pain to end, please do not hurt yourself, amen. Matter of fact, I want to encourage you. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is available 24 hours a day. You can text or call 800 273 8255 This is critical, my friends. Please. There's an epidemic in our land. Amen. And Satan will tempt you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. But I want to encourage you. When you're hurting, when life is hurting, Yes, have a talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. But reach out 
and talk to someone. Talk to someone who's in the flesh and the blood, amen? Yeah, someone who maybe can hug you and just sit with you to encourage us that we can get through this, amen? And, and those of you who are doing well, this is not your issue of life, maybe make yourself available to others to help someone who is struggling, help someone who is, needs, needs your help to cope, amen? Please, please, please be there for them, amen? Please be there for them. And check out your family members, amen? Check out your college students, your high school students, amen? Your junior high students. Check to see where they are. Your friends, amen? Because some, you know, we can all smile on Sunday morning, amen? But it's behind this smile what's lurking, amen? Amen. That's why we need to pray for one another, amen? That's why we need to encourage one another, amen? Pray. So don't do the devil's job of tearing people down. You need to encourage one another because you never know what people are going through, amen? You never know how people are being affected, impacted, amen? And so I want to encourage, amen? Yes, we want to call on Jesus. And this is also why we need to be gathering together in the sanctuary to worship because it blesses you to be in community, amen? It blesses you to be with one another. It blesses you not only to worship God, but just to see something somebody else, to know that I'm not here by myself, amen. If someone give you a smile, amen, well, we, we, I know we're not hugging right now, but we can smile, we can give a fist bump, amen, we can have a mask on, amen, but we can encourage one another just by your presence, amen. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together, some have done, amen, because we encourage one another, amen, when we're together in community, amen, praise God. We're wired to be in community, amen, that's what God's wired is, amen, and so many people have been been sequestered because of COVID, amen. But wear your mask, wash your hands, amen. Take your a vaccine shot, amen. Praise God. And begin to mingle in community at safe distances, amen. Because we need, we, we are social creatures, amen. We are social creatures, amen. I was reading a story about a, a young lady. Uh, she uh, was, uh, had attempted suicide, amen. And one of her issues was that she felt so isolated, Amen. We're made to be in community, my friends. The way God has wired us, amen. And, and worshiping together is a way to do that, amen. Because we come and we focus on the Lord Jesus Christ and we see one another and we can smile at one another and encourage one another, amen. And pray for one another. Because sometimes God puts someone in your heart and you just need to, you just need to pray for them, amen. And, my friend, and then reach out. If, if you're hurting, if you're struggling, it is, please do not be ashamed to reach out and ask for help, Amen. The shame is when you don't reach out to help, amen? We won't think less of you, amen? Amen. Because when you're going through somebody, you just need to have someone on the other end of the phone to say, hey, I'm listening to you, brother. I'm listening to your sister. I can pray for you. I can't fix you, but I can listen to you. I can give you hope. And I want to encourage you, my friends, don't lose hope. Here we go. Uh, verse 7. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, rise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. My friends, sometimes the journey is too great for us by ourselves. Sometimes the weight of the issues of life will just weigh you down. Yeah. My friends, that's why God has put us in community, to encourage one another, to love on one another. Amen. Yeah, because sometimes... The battle the, is just not ours. It's too heavy for us. Amen. But remember, God is bigger than the source of all your fears. God is bigger than all your stresses. God is bigger than all your anxieties. And God is bigger than your depression. Amen. And I want to encourage you, my friends. Know that sometimes the journey is too great for you. That you've got to reach out to God. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. Life is sacred. Life belongs to God. Yes, so, and sometimes we can't even identify the source of why we're stressed, going through anxiety or depressed, but we can trust the Lord. Amen. Because we're in His hands. And He's promised never to leave us or forsake us. Amen. And the best place to be in the whole wide cosmos is in the hands of God, knowing that God loves you. Anytime you doubt that God loves you, remember, He went all the way to Calvary's cross just for you. Amen. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus comes to give you life and give you it more abundantly. Amen. God really loves you. Amen. 
Don't lose hope. John McCain, who was one time a prisoner of war, the late John McCain, he, he was a prisoner of war, and he said a lot of people who were hurt less than he was, less severely than he was, they died because they lost hope. He said he never lost hope. Though he was beaten and he was uh, severely handicapped, he said, I never lost hope. Hope, amen. And I want to encourage you, no matter how dark the night, amen, no matter how dark the night, no matter how wet your pillow is with tears, amen, please don't ever lose hope, amen. Please don't lose hope, amen. Tell your neighbor, don't lose hope, amen. Tell the person you're sitting at home, don't lose hope, amen, because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. All of the ground is sinking sand. In the midnight hour, my hope is Jesus, amen. When all my friends abandon me, my hope is Jesus. When I don't know how things are gonna work out, my hope is Jesus, amen. And when I come to the end of my days, my hope is Jesus Christ. He's promised me, amen. He's promised us, amen, never to leave us for or forsake us, amen. He's our way maker, amen. He can make a way out of no way. He's a promise keeper. He does not lie, amen, and we're in his hands. He'll never leave you or forsake you. You can press through because of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. What kind of hope are you talking about? Well, 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 it was a Friday. They nailed him to a cross. He died on a Friday. It was Saturday. He was still dead on Saturday. But, but early Sunday morning, hope got up from the grave, and that same hope can resurrect you from your sadness and from your stress, from your anxiety, from your depression. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ. God bless you, saints.